Good morning. It is so beautiful out today. It's about 50 degrees and it's super sunny. So today we're going to head down to my garden and I'm going to give you an update on some of those things. But first we need to let out the chickens. I'm going to take them down to one of the garden areas and they're going to be helping me there to till up some of that soil and loosen up some of that. Come on out. Where's the sixth one of you? Where's the other? The secret to any chicken's heart is mealworms. They absolutely love them. We buy them in bulk and then we store them in these pretzel containers that we have. And if you ever need the chickens to go somewhere, you just bring these treats with you. So this garden area right here was a new garden area last year. I didn't really do much to clean it up last fall. You can see I still have some cosmos right there that are dead. So I'm letting the chickens kind of just roam around in there and they love digging up mulch. So it's a perfect area for them. We definitely need to fix this door. It weighs too much and it's pulling this post down. So when I try to open it, it gets stuck. We've actually had some people comment on our video where we made this saying something similar or asking about if this ever held up. Well, the answer is it really didn't hold up. We gotta fix it, um, but it's better than having no door. So we'll take it. Can you follow me in? Here. Hawks are a definite threat to our chickens when they're free ranging. I know some people who are hesitant to let their chickens free range because of hawks. Our girls have been pretty good with running and hiding anytime they see an aerial predator. The only thing is, is when you're putting them in a fenced in area like this, that has really no place for the chickens to hide, that can be a definite issue. So the only time I ever put them in this garden to help me till up the area is when I'm in my other garden space that's right there. And so when I'm there, I can keep an eye on any of those aerial predators. And if I need to, you know, <laughs> scream or yell at a hawk, I can. Before we go head to the garden to show you what's going on, I forgot to grab my kitchen shears and a colander to harvest my lettuce. So that's one thing that's super exciting. I have some lettuce that's already ready to harvest. Um, the reason why I have it ready to harvest is because I started it pretty early indoors and then I transplanted it into milk cartons for a while to keep outdoors when it was really, really cold. And those kind of worked as a tiny mini greenhouse. So it did work really well and now we have some lettuce to harvest. And with that, we have our first harvest of 2022. The method of growing lettuce that I use is called cut and come again lettuce. So essentially what you do is you plant anywhere from 10 to 20 seeds in one area. And then whenever your plant grows and it becomes really leafy, you come back and you give it a haircut and you trim off those top leaves. And then those lettuce plants will continue to produce. So when I do this, I typically plant multiple groupings of seeds so that I can come and harvest one little patch of lettuce and then come back the next week and harvest another. This just makes it really nice to have a continuous supply of lettuce, especially if you love fresh greens like we do. Generally, you wanna harvest your lettuce first thing in the morning. It's noon here today right now, and it's not as big of a deal whenever you're 
afternoon temperatures are still in the 50s and 60s. It's when your temperatures start getting into the mid 60s, 70s, and even 80s that you really wanna harvest first thing in the morning so that you get that nice crispy lettuce. I like to rinse off my lettuce by using a stock pot and putting some water in it. I also put some salt in it as well. And then I take my lettuce and I dunk it in here and just kind of swoosh it around. And then I used to just let the lettuce dry out on cookie trays, but my mom found a salad spinner for me at like a thrift store or Goodwill for $3 and it basically looks brand new. So this will be my first time using it but I'm pretty sure it will work. I have a couple of wilty pieces. I'm just gonna give this to the chickens. All right, let's see how it worked out. Oh, this looks pretty good. That definitely did some work. I wonder if the water goes, oh yeah, look at that. All that water, could probably use it, do it again. Let's go ahead and check out what else I planted in the garden. In this bed here, I planted half of the bed with snapdragons and then I planted the other half with some kale. Oh my gosh, one of the chickens got out. <laughs> Let's see her. Oh my gosh. I must have left the door open slightly and she got out. Anyways, I'm sure she'll be fine. I'll go put her back in a second. But so snapdragons and kale are in this bed. Last year I planted my snapdragons directly in the ground and I didn't realize that they like cooler temperatures. So this year I started them indoors and got them out into my garden um, about two weeks ago in March. Throwing away the plans with keeping the chickens in that fenced in area. We have multiple aerial predators just flying around right now. There's about five hawks and these girls need the ability to be able to hide. So they are now just out free ranging. They like to come under here and scratch under the barn. We're just gonna keep them out and let them do their own thing. And I'm gonna keep an eye on all of those hawks. So in this bed here, I have some cabbage, kale, and broccoli. I also have some nasturtium. We had some really cold temperatures last night and we covered these beds with some blankets and tarps, but I'm not so sure that the nasturtium will survive, but um, I would love to know your feedback. I'm gonna show you a little clip to show you what they look like. Okay, so here's one of the nasturtium plants. You can see that the leaves are really wilty and the stem looks really wet and like soggy almost. Uh, I don't think that these are gonna survive. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but I'm guessing it was the cold temperatures. I really don't think this one's going to survive. It just looks like a blob of dead green material at this point. So if you have any experience with nasturtiums and know maybe if it was the temperatures or something else, let me know. The slugs have already started feeding on some of my other plants. You can see here they took a big bite out of my cabbage. I see some other damage on my broccoli plants, but I'll just come out here these next few mornings and check these and I'll come and hand pick any slugs that I see. I did go ahead and put some copper around my kale plants over here. If you saw my video last year about how to deal with slugs, I used this copper wire mesh last year and this worked really well to keep off some of the bigger slugs. So I'm gonna do that again with my kale plants over here 
and anything that looks like it has extensive damage. Here's one of my broccoli plants. You can see if I come in here close, there are some purple leaves here in the center. Now, there are a lot of different reasons why you might get purple leaves when it comes to broccoli, and they're pretty sensitive to different stresses. So right now, I'm going to leave them. They should be okay. I'm gonna keep a close eye on them. I have dealt with cabbage maggots in the past. Cabbage maggots feed on the root system of the plant, which can also cause discoloration in the leaves as a sign. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on these for the next couple of days. If I see more signs of stress, I may dig one up to check its roots to make sure there's no maggots. It's likely because we've had some super cold temperatures at night, always in the low 30s, not to freezing, but just really low. And that can definitely stress out some of your broccoli plants. In this bed here, on this half, I planted onion sets. They are now sprouting, which is exciting. In the past, I've had onion sets do really, really well in the beginning and the cooler temperatures in spring. But as, as soon as it started getting warm, I would get some like disease looking plants. So I'm hoping that this year we actually get a pretty good onion harvest. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do on the other half of this bed yet. Um, I still have to do some planning with my garden. So far, most of the stuff that I've planted in my garden has kind of just been me planting it willy-nilly. Um, I like to plan for things, but right now we're doing a ton of planning for the house and I'm just feeling a little bit overwhelmed with everything we have going on. So. If there's one thing that I've learned from gardening, there's no problem with learning from trial and error. So I'm just planning on kind of going with the flow this year um, and not stressing myself out over any little issues. Over in this bed here, underneath these two planks, I planted carrots. I learned this trick from Roots and Refuge Farm about putting these boards over top of where you plant carrots. The idea is that they help keep the carrot seeds where they're at. Carrot seeds are super, super tiny if you've never seen them before, and um, it can be easy for them to wash away. Uh, so this is gonna be my first time trying this. I hope that it works out. Um, in the past, I've definitely had success with carrots germinating, but they've kind of just been all over the place. And so I'm hoping this will help me keep them more organized and in a line like I would ideally want. On this side of the trellis, I went ahead and planted some snap peas. I grew them in this area last year, but between growing the snap peas, I had since grown cucumbers here. So I'm gonna do snap peas again in this area. Also planted some snap peas right here along this trellis. That was that other trellis I just showed you. I went ahead and planted some calendula and some dianthus, which are flowers, right against this building. I'm not exactly sure on how big the plants will get. Last year I planted the calendula a little bit too late, and so um, I wanted to give them plenty of space, and I'm hoping that that area turns into some beautiful flowers. If we go over here to this trellis, last year I had loofah growing on this trellis, and it got crazy and grew up the side of this wall. Um, but this year I put some sweet peas here, which are typically harvested from flowers from what I know, but this will be my first time doing that. Just trying out a couple of new things, especially when it comes to flowers. That's something that I just wanna gain a lot more experience with. While we're at it, I might as well show you our cover crop and show you how that's doing. This is the cover crop that we planted last fall. It's called Crimson Clover. It hasn't flowered yet, so I'm gonna let it grow for a little bit longer before we mow it down. But over here, you can kind of see that we have some of that purple dead nettle mixed in here. Some people see purple dead nettle as being a weed. It actually has a lot of beneficial properties. I'll probably pull it out of here just so that um, the crimson clover can take over more, but it's part of the mint family. And one of the signature signs that it's part of the mint family is that it has a square stem. So you can see that right here. It's really, really interesting. But there's a lot of different beneficial properties with this um, and you're able to use it. I've never actually done anything with it myself, but it's good to know that it can be used for medicinal purposes. So that's all I have going on in the garden itself, but I do have a lot more seed starts up by the house. One of those being Brussels sprouts and I'm really excited to grow Brussels sprouts because I've never grown them in the past. 
and they just look pretty fun. But from what I understand, they have a pretty long growing season. So I'm gonna try to get them in the ground as soon as possible. Here are all of the Brussels sprout plants. I also have some more lettuce mixed in here, but most of these are Brussels sprouts. They look a little bit like broccoli, um, but they're definitely taller plants in general. I also have a couple more flowers out here getting ready to go out to the garden. And then look at how big these tomato plants are. I started these way too early. I started these in January for my seed starting course that I created. So if you're interested in learning how to start seeds, I have a course on how to start seeds indoors. Um, but I started these in January for that course and these plants are ready to go outside, but it is way too cold for them to be planted in the grounds yet. So I'm gonna wait a couple more weeks. Hopefully I can manage them in these containers, but that's to be determined. Let's take a walk into the basement and I'll show you what else I have going on. This is all I have left growing indoors. I'm glad to have some of the stuff outdoors. Um, I have some hot peppers that are doing really, really well. I have a lot of tomatoes right here that need to be transplanted. I told myself that I wouldn't grow as many tomato plants this year, but oh my gosh, I have a lot of tomatoes. And so I need to separate those. I love plants way too much to snip some of these off and just keep the best one. I'm the type of person who has to transplant them. Let me know if I'm not the only one because I just really hate killing plants. These right here are some zinnia seeds. I think these are straw flowers. I don't remember for sure. I started a lot of flowers and for some reason it looks like I'm missing a label. Over here I have eggplant. So I have several of those plants. This is a mum. This is a different type of mum than what you're normally used to seeing during the fall time. I don't exactly remember what it looks like. I think I bought the seeds from Burpee, um, but I'm excited to see it grow. The leaves are just so stinking cute. Okay, I take it back. Whatever I saw on the other side are not straw flowers because my straw flowers are right here. Um, so I have absolutely no clue what these things are right here. I guess I'll have to wait to find out. Definitely going to be a surprise. Thanks so much for joining me on my garden update. I hope you learned a couple of little things here and there as I shared what's happening in my garden. I would love to know what things you are planting in your garden this year. So definitely leave a comment below and tell me, um, tell me some things that you're growing that are fun and new to you. Uh, gardening is always just such a great way for people to connect to each other and to learn from one another. And so I would love to hear from you. Um, I am hoping to do more of these vloggy style videos going forward. We are hoping to post more than just one video a week. We realize that it's kind of hard to give everyone updates if we're only posting once a week. So um, stay tuned. Maybe we'll start posting two times a week. Uh, we'll just have to see. But thanks again and I hope that you have a great week.